Today's lesson is all about DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid. Before we talk about today's lesson on DNA, let's review the macromolecules. Remember that the prefix macro means big, so macromolecules are big molecules. There are four types of macromolecules. One macromolecule is a carbohydrate. It provides us with energy. We can find carbohydrates in foods like cereals, bread, fruits, and pasta. Another macromolecule is protein. Proteins perform many functions which include speeding up chemical reactions, making hormones, providing structures, and defending you from infection. Proteins determine your body's form and carry out functions. Proteins in foods include meats, beans, and nuts. Lipids store long-term energy. Examples include fats within food. Lastly, nucleic acids are responsible for passing and storing genetic information. DNA is an example of a nucleic acid. DNA is called the blueprint of life because it contains instructions for making every protein in your body. All of these macromolecules or big molecules are made of smaller pieces called monomers. The monomer of carbohydrates is a monosaccharide. The monomer of proteins is an amino acid. The monomer for lipids is a fatty acid. Lastly, the monomer for nucleic acid is a nucleotide. Let's review how a nucleotide looks like. Earlier in the year, I referred to a nucleotide as a house and its property. A nucleotide is made of a sugar which represents the pentagon or house-like figure. The sugar in DNA is called deoxyribose. At the back of the house, some people have a pool. The circle represents a phosphate group. Attached to the house would be the garage or driveway, which is represented by the nitrogen base. A nucleotide has four different types of nitrogen bases. They are adenine, which is represented with a capital A, Thymine, represented with a capital T, cytosine, with a capital C, and guanine, with a capital G. For a long time, scientists knew of DNA, but never knew of its structure. Even though people did not have the technology we have today, there were a few scientists that were able to find more information about the DNA structure. One of the scientists that contributed information for understanding the structure of DNA was Erwin Chargaff. He took samples of DNA from different organisms. In all of his experiments, he observed that the nitrogen bases always paired up. He observed that adenine always paired up with thymine, and guanine always paired up with the cytosine. This observation was known as Chargaff's rules. Another important person that helped in the discovery of the DNA structure was a scientist named Rosalind Franklin. She took an x-ray picture of the DNA structure. From this picture, she observed that the DNA had an x-shaped pattern, meaning it had two strands that were twisted. She also observed that the nitrogen bases were towards the center of the DNA. Two scientists, James Watson and Francis Crick, used Chargaff's rules and Rosalind Franklin's x-rays to build a model of DNA. Their model showed DNA as a double helix, which looked like a twisted ladder. The sides of the DNA or ladder is made of phosphates and sugars, and the center or rungs contain the nitrogen bases. Let's create a DNA model together. Remember that the sides of the DNA or ladder are made of phosphates and sugars. The center is made of the nitrogen bases. 
Here we have one DNA strand with the bases adenine, cytosine, and guanine on the left. What nitrogen bases would complement or match this first strand? Pause the video to answer this question on your own. According to Shargaff's rules, adenine will pair with thymine, and cytosine will pair with guanine. So the second strand will contain the nitrogen bases T, G, and C. Watson and Crick also discovered that nitrogen bases were put together with hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are weak bonds that let the two strands of the helix separate. Why would we want weak bonds to hold the bases together? Well, it is important when replicating DNA. The DNA unzips and the strands are copied. Pause the video and answer the following questions to check your understanding. What do the pentagons represent? What do the circles represent? If a DNA strand had the bases A, T, T, C, what would the complementary base pairs be on the second DNA strand? The pentagons represent the sugars, in this case, deoxyribose. The circles represent the phosphate group. And the second DNA strand would be T-A-A-G.